All right, so once again, warm-up number 27 should be on your screen. And basically, it's uh, to compute standard deviation and sketch a bell curve. By now, you guys should be experts. And as I was sharing with, our, with your colleague, Alexia, that uh, we've been using formulas without knowing that you've been using formulas. I'm just taking you guys through processes. All right? So, um, and aside from that, um, you have a code? Yeah, log in, please. Uh, we started a new month, so we're going to switch seats, but till tomorrow, since today they have you guys somewhere with a presentation. How'd it go, by the way? Good? Good, all right? All right, good. All right, so let's get cracking. Do me a favor, copy the warm up, and then um, warm up number 27, and then copy the agenda for the sake of time, just because of, of the fact that we need to uh, move on. I'll give you guys some time, and then get a Cornell note ready, please. Copy and go. All right, so to be just about done copying the warm-up and the agenda, yes, you can finish up the uh, standard deviation a little bit. I just want to get it started. So here we go. Our agenda for today, warm-up number 27, frequency tables, and uh, home play for tonight is only two problems, only two itty-bitty problems. You're like, thank you, Mr. Q, you're welcome. I got you. However, uh, I don't know if you guys noticed, I got you your books already. Ooh, let's go. It's going to start getting funner by the minute. So, with that said, uh, copy the code for your home play on the screen. W-H-Y-P-D. 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 All right? So, Last night, you should have had a uh, time to act like tomatoes and uh, ketchup. <laughs> nah. Ketchup, tomatoes. Anyways, and uh, should be relaxed and ready to go, yeah? Okay. So, tonight's home play, only two problems. As I promised, we're going to start seeing big amounts of data now. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> oh, you can't block that. Anyways, uh, we've been practicing standard deviation with how many numbers? About five, six, seven. <laughs> Anyways, let's move on. I can represent frequency tables into graphs. I can represent frequency tables into graphs. So, and uh, just to recap, it was on the very second week of uh, our school year, to be exact, August 28th, I believe, I introduced you guys to frequency tables. And if you guys remember, it started with the data in regards to me shooting basketballs and, and uh, with certain baskets worth 1.2 point, 3 points, and I gave you guys that example as data, but then we made a table. And uh, we got to the point that we saw it like this. So, let me go back. Data, we're still talking about categorical and quantitative, but remind your neighbor what's another word for categorical data? What's another word for categorical? Looks like Caleb's got it. So quantitative, no. We got one, and the other one should be what? Qualitative, yeah, we got that. So then gave you guys the example for frequency. So we started with one wave frequency tables, and then from there I, we went to what? Two wave frequency tables. You guys remember that? Yes, Mr. Q. All right. So now we're going to go more in depth in regards to frequency tables. All right? So look up. We went ahead and I gave you guys the intro to the graph because I didn't want you guys to get uh, right here. This is a well. I don't want you guys over here. So I gave you guys just the graphs themselves, and I gave you the tables already made. Let me repeat that again. The tables already made. So now you know where I'm heading, right? And from there, I ask you to get these graphs, his, histogram, polygon, or ogives. All right? 
Well, how do you make those kind of frequency tables? We're going to be talking about three different types. Here we go. These are known as distribution frequency tables. That's when we have uh, large amounts of data and we need to kind of like compress them into one small table. So for example, there's one that we call grouped distribution and it looks like this. Hopefully it looks kind of familiar that we've been using parts of it. Here goes ungrouped distribution. Okay, now look at grouped and ungrouped. And notice the difference from one to the other. What would be the only difference? Tell your neighbor, what's the only difference that you see from one, from the grouped to the ungrouped, just by looking at it? Like I said, we don't really know a lot of it, but we've seen part of it. All right, share with your neighbor before I call on someone. Jaden, what do you notice from the group to the ungroup? So the totals and then the class limits. Yeah, the class limits are different. For grouped, there's limits between two numbers because there's going to be different numbers in between that you're going to be selecting from. Whereas ungroup is a smaller amount of data, so that's why they're only giving you the limit of one number because maybe nothing repeats after that and they're very close close together okay so the other type of distribution uh, table is known as categorical look up all right so tell your neighbor the difference between categorical and the group and ungrouped what's the only difference that you see Jaden, pass someone. All right, so instead of having the class boundaries and class limits, they only have class. And notice it's not a number, it's a what? A type or a, just a, a group of uh, type of uh, uh, class. But also, who noticed the percent? Yeah, categorical is going to start getting into percent, and that's where all the practice that we did at the beginning of the school year and all that starts playing come to mind, okay? And last but not least, the last one of the distribution, grouped and ungrouped, are also known as cumulative distribution. Think about it. Have you heard that before? Cumulative distribution or cumulative table? Have you never aware of that appeared? Where did we see cumulative tables? Cumulative tables. What graph reminds you of cumulative? <coughs> All right, looks like Peyton's got it. Graph. Cumulative. All right. Uh, Mia Victoria. Ojai, that is correct. That's cumulative data, and it kind of like grows, right? All right. So, with that said, we covered histograms, and I gave you this table. We covered frequency, polygons, and we covered OJ. yes? But I gave you the table, all right? That means you're going to create the table. So, copy the data, please, on your paper. <laughs> ah. Example number one, it says construct a group frequency distribution for the data using seven classes. And just in passing, hold on, I'll, I'll forward that screen to you. Uh, reminder, here's our table. Each of these rows are known as what? Classes. Each of these rows of numbers are known as what? Classes. So what, how many classes do they want? Seven of them. Okay, so copy that. I'll give you some time. All right. So, we have our data, and it reads, example one, construct a group of frequency distribution for the data using seven classes. 
Record high temperatures in Fahrenheit in the United States are as follows, which are all of these. Okay, so how do you make a group frequency table? Well, I'm going to start off with things that we already know how to do, and we've been working with since the beginning of the school year. And the first thing we're going to work with, and I'm going to label that step one in green, step one. Tell your neighbor what R stands for. What does R stand for? All right. Uh, Fernando. Range. That is correct. So write that down. Range. And tell your neighbor how to find the range. You should know how to do that by now. Because we've been doing this since the beginning of the school year. Bye. All right. So tell your neighbor the range, please. What is the range? All right. Diego, how do we find the range? Yeah, he said, you subtract the largest number from the smallest number. What is our largest temperature, or the highest temperature, everyone? What is it? 134. So 134 minus, and what's the uh, lowest temperature? One hundred. So my range is 34. So step one, what do you need to do? Find the range. Step two, and this is going to be new, find the width, width. So write W-I-D-T-H, or just a W. How do you find the width? Well, Mr. Q, that I don't know what you're talking about, so let me show you. Look up to the screen. With, they're talking about this. Look up. From class to class, there's a distance from here to here to here to here. Each of those distances are known as width. Therefore, how do we find that distance, Mr. Q? Well, look up. You find the width. For your table, you take the R and divide it by the number of classes that you want. Number of classes that you want. In this case, how many classes are they asking us to get? Seven. That is correct. So therefore, we write to find the width, we write the range is 34 divided by 7. Calculators calculate. Approximately 4.85. Thank you. So. Yeah, Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, so whenever we are computing the, the width, look up, please. Always make a asterisk, a heart, uh -huh. round up. And we're rounding up to the nearest whole number. So therefore, the next one would be what? What's our width, guys? Yeah, our width would be 5. And it doesn't matter if you are at 4.1 or 4.01 or 4.0009. As long as you're above that number, you have to round up to the next whole number. Everybody understand? All right. So now that we have our width, now we can get started. You all ready? Step 3. Class. Limits. Class limits. 
All right, Mr. Q, how do we do that? So we start over here and write plot limits. Limits. All right, what was the lowest number that we said we had? So we started at 100. Ready? What is the width? Five, so that means the next class down should be 105 because that's the width, right? So then the next class down is what? What is it? 110 and then 115, 120, 125, 130. Are those seven classes? Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes. But my limit for the first one starts at 100. If the second one starts at 105, that means the first one has to go to 10. Yes, 104. That is correct. That means the second one goes to 109. The next one. 114, the next one 119, the next one 124, the next one 129, and the next one 134. All right, before I move on, tell your neighbor to see if they understood how to get the class limits before we move on to the next step. Class limits, how do you get those? Tell your neighbor, please. Tell your neighbor. All right, we got it? All right, next. Draw a line down right here. Step four, class boundaries, boundaries, class boundaries. So class boundaries, boundaries. All right, for class boundaries, it's usually with a decimal. I don't know if you guys noticed on the data that we uh, worked with, they were decimals. And this is how it, how it goes. They get it from the class limit. They start with the first number, subtract 0.5. And then the other limit, they add 0.5. So therefore, what would be my first class limit to get started? 100 minus 0.5 is what? 99.5. And 104 plus 0.5 is what? 104.5. So on one side they subtract and on the other side they do what? They add. So what would be our next one, Areli? 104.5 and all the way to what? 109.5, that is correct and so on and so forth. So fill in the rest. You should be able to do that yourself. All right, what's the next one, uh, Clarissa? Yeah, 109.5 all the way to what? 114.5, that is correct. Next one, Illy. Uh -huh. Alexa, the next one. Mm-hmm. Next one, Diego. One twenty nine point five, yes. 
And our last one is 129.5 to 134.5. All right. So here goes the process to make sure we got it. We started off with data. What did we do first? Find the range. Okay. Second, we needed the width so that we know what is the space from class to class. And how do we find that width? You take the range divided by the number of classes. In this case, they wanted seven classes, so therefore divided by seven, and then we round up to the nearest whole number. From there, we take that five. We started with the lowest number for our class limit, which is 100. And from there, we went five, 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 five. And of course, at the other end, before 105 is 104, and so on and so forth. For the class boundaries, we subtract half from the one limit, and then we add half to the other limit for each class. All right, from one to five, how come are you with that? We got this, right? All right, number five, tallies, tallies. This is where we start our, uh, we become statisticians and we start tallying our data. So I just sent you a screen. You can start crossing off uh, numbers. So we're gonna start with numbers in between, uh, I'm gonna write here in blue, tallies, tallies. All right, so let's start with our first class from 99.5 all the way to 104.5. Let's find out how much data we can find between those numbers. What's our first number we said was 100. Let's see, is there anything below 104.5 on this first column? No, this one, just that 100. So I'm gonna tally one there. Uh, here, no, no. Nope. No. 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 And here's 104. And that's it, right? So two tallies. So check this out. Look up. This last column, just use the this symbol, like a uh, I, I don't, italicized S, which stands for what? Tell your neighbor. Yeah, frequency, that is correct. So we write here our frequency for the first class, which is two. And so on and so forth. Let's go to the next one. So I'm gonna make here a little dividing line so I stay organized. So let's go between 104.5 and 109.5. So let's see, is there anything between 104.5, 109.5? Here's one, which is you know what, I'm gonna switch colors just so like that. I, I'm gonna alternate blue and red so like that I keep track of my data. So for this next one, I'm gonna use red. So let's see, between 104 to 109, here's 107. That's one tally. Uh, the next column, 108, that's another tally. Uh, here, no. No. Here's another one, 105. That's another tally. Um, here's another 105, another tally. Uh, here's 109, another tally. Here's 105, another tally. Here's 106, another tally. Um, and 109, another tally. Is that it? Yeah, right? Who got eight for the next one? Yeah? Okay. All right. So you can be crossing out on your screen. That's why I sent you that screen so you can be tap, like crossing out numbers and tallying your data. I'm going to switch to green for the next one. Between 109.5 one, and 114.5. 109.5, 109.5, Okay, so then here's one, two, three, Oh, I thought 
forgot this 14. And a 12 over here. Come on, Q. 112. That's 5. 114. That's 6. That's seven. One ten. That's eight. One fourteen. That's nine. One ten. That's ten. One fourteen. That's eleven. One eleven. One twelve. That's fourteen. And then we got one twelve. Then I got one, two, and three. One, two, three. So a total of one hundred and one hundred, I'm oh, sorry. Five, ten, fifteen. Eighteen on the next one? Yeah, let's go. All right. All right, help me with the next one. What was your frequency between 114 and 119.5? If you share with your neighbor, so I bet I can get that number. All right. Looks like Chelsea's got it. What is the next one, Chelsea? 13? Hands if you got 13 for the next one. Okay, looks about right. 13. How about the next one? What'd you get for the next one? Uh, Illy. We got 2, 8, 18, 13. What would be the next one? What is it? 7. Hands if you got 7. Looks about right. And then between 124.5, 129.5, 124, bless you, 124.5, 129 124.5, 124 to 129. I only see one. Is that true? Yeah. So one, which is right there, right here. And between 129.5 and 134.5, I think there's only one also. Yes? All right. So, what would be our sixth step, guys? We got class limits, class boundaries, we got tallies, and our sixth step is our frequency. 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 All right, so once again, the, the entire process, you copy the data, they give you data. First thing you do is the range. Second thing, the width. From there, we establish our class limits using the width. Write the, uh, uh, the upper limit for each of those. Then from there, we go to boundaries, minus half, up one half for each class boundary. And then from there, our tallies with our data. And then we just write our frequency. All right, so if I was to ask you how many total how many total data do we have? Tell your neighbor how to find out. How many total data do we have? How to tell your neighbor how to find out? Without counting all the data. Like without going one, two, three. How many total data? What is it? Close. The total of the frequency. That tells us how many total data. So therefore, 2 plus 8, 10 plus 18, 28, 29, 30, 31, 41, 48, 49, 50. Why 50? Because there's how many states? 
in the U.S. 50. Let's go! So, from one to five, how comfortable are you with this? Five, five, five. We got this, right? All right. So, I'm going to give you another set of data. You're like, yay. Oh, before we do, question. What are the first two steps to construct a group frequency distribution table from the raw data below using seven classes? Without looking at your notes, what are the first two steps? Are you neighbor, please? First two steps. All right. So with that said, I'm going to give you another set of data, which is on ages of U.S. presidents at inauguration. Does everybody know what inauguration is? Yeah, when they start and they are given, like, the welcome to get started with their uh, service. So therefore, don't copy that one. Yeah. All you're going to do is build me the table from there. So with that said, I'm gonna, I sent you the screen where you can start writing stuff, but on your paper, start with the table and start with the steps. Yes? All right, just for the sake of time. All right, try to do it without looking at your notes. See if, uh, if it already sicked in. You got this. All right, I'll give you some time. Copy and go, and then I'm going to have you uh, share some of your notes. All right, so I'm going to give you guys some time to finish that problem. Uh, for those of you that are following along on video, once again, the process is completely on this screen. Um, this is just setting up a table, which is known as a frequency distribution table, using raw data, which is all these numbers that they give us. And uh, your code for tonight is W8 Y T D to create your home plate from there. And once again, the home plate are these two problems. Notice data and data. So that's the home plate to make two tables. All right, and I'll stop the video right there. Enjoy your home plate. Let's go. <laughs> uh, right, Ion? We got this. Oh yeah. 